Well, Yona, thank you for coming on today. Uh, you're a cost segregation expert. And I think it's something that uh, there needs to be a lot of education on because I think it, there's a lot of opportunity by utilizing this tool the proper way. And so, um, again, thank you for coming on today. Pleasure, Joe. Thanks for having me on the show. You bet. So I think, you know, for uh, we have a lot of subscribers that are experienced, but could you give us just kind of a down and dirty of cost segregation, just the definition of cost segregation uh, for our newer subscribers? Absolutely. And there are, believe it or not, even the most, uh, you know, successful uh, and experienced real estate owners that I know didn't even know what conservation was until, right. until, you know, educating them. So it's a concept that unfortunately has not been given enough attention. Essentially, it's a tax strategy that allows you to accelerate depreciation deductions, uh, giving you more cash flow. So it's a cash flow mechanism, but essentially what depreciation is, and just to back up a step, is depreciation is a tax deduction. When you buy a either residential or commercial property, you're able to take literally a write-off, tax write-off of your income tax for the entire value of that property. Uh, but you, you just have to do it over a long period of time. That's called a depreciation deduction. You get a little bit every single year. Cost segregation is like accelerated depreciation, allows you to break down the building into components. And some of those components depreciate faster, which allows you to take bigger deductions in the earlier years. Perfect. Couldn't have, that was a uh, spot on. Uh, who are <laughs> most of your clients? I mean, it's, are they sophisticated devel or developers, investors, or are they newer? Uh, investors? Um, we have, we have everything. I mean, Madison Specs, we're the biggest national conservation company. Uh, you know, so we have everyone from individual, you know, single family owners, uh, whether it's long-term, short-term rentals are very popular now up to, you know, we have many clients who are, are REITs and, you know, large uh, developers, office, industrial, self-storage, you know, one of the biggest self-storage REITs is one of our clients who do, you know, a couple dozen properties a month for them for, you know, so there's really everything in between. And uh, mostly done on commercial, right? Mostly commercial. I would say, you know, our business, it, it does across all spectrums. I'd say about 30% of our business in, is in multifamily. Um, and altogether, about 90% is in the commercial space. So you do have some residential. Like I said, we have a lot of people using this for short-term rentals, like Airbnb properties and doing it on uh, on residential rentals like that. But commercial office, retail, industrial, that's uh, still our biggest our biggest okay. clientele. Can you kind of walk us through the process from the very beginning, you know, length of time, how long it takes? What are the steps that I, as a property owner, what do I have to go through? Really not a lot. And it's uh, I'm happy to walk you through the steps. The first thing we always like to do is just, you know, have a conversation, information gathering. So we'll right. run a free estimate, which is an analysis, a proposal showing you what the potential tax savings would be if you did a full cost segregation study. And so it is an engineering study. I'll get to that in the in the steps along the way. But in that initial analysis, it's just kind of understanding, hmm, if I pay, you know, a few thousand dollars or whatever the cost is going to be, and um, to do this study, and I get back, you know, a hundred thousand dollars of tax savings, well, that's a pretty good deal. Right. And so it's a pretty, pretty much no-brainer once you run those analysis to see, hmm, does this make sense? Does this not make sense? Pretty much on any property that's purchased for over, I'd say, two to three hundred thousand dollars, it's worthwhile to get that free analysis just to see what the savings would be for you. So that's the first step we do. The second step is uh, more a little more information gathering. Once someone does engage us for the process, there's an engineering study of the property. So it's it's similar to an appraisal. We'll have someone actually go out to the property, an engineer who's qualified. And the reason why I keep saying engineer is this is what the IRS requires for a conservation to be done. Mm -hmm. And in the tax code, it says someone who has uh, you know, experience in engineering and construction, construction basically to break down the property. As I mentioned before, instead of the whole building being depreciated and taking a little bit, what we're saying is, well, the walls and doors and roof and all the other structural components, those depreciate on that longer 27 and a half or 39 year schedule, but certain things that we can break out from an engineering perspective, like furniture or fixtures, equipment, window treatments, you know, lighting fixture, all those kinds of things that are actually de depreciate on a five-year schedule. And so you're able to now identify what those are 
and create a very detailed report. So from the from you as the property owner's perspective, there's very little involvement. We'll ask for just the ability to have someone, you know, meet the engineer on site, sure. or we do a lot of them virtually with like just a, a video walkthrough, if that's possible. And then request documentation, like an appraisal uh, site survey, your closing statement, if you have that. Uh, obviously, those those things most people would have. And and then it's about a six-week process for us beginning to end. And in the end of the day, you get this detailed report, like 100 pages long. And, and in there, you know, you're oh, like, what, what do I do with this? This is like too detailed. Just- but there's really one page in there that you just yeah. hand off to your accountant. And that shows you what your new tax deduction is going to be this year. Okay. And every year. All right. Well, that's not too painful then. You know, you just hear cost segregation. And if you're, you know, your head starts spinning. Oh, my God, what's this going to entail? This is going to be so much work. And it's a little daunting when you you start reading about what it actually is. But uh, it's really not that bad from a property owner. We've got guys like you out there that are, can simplify the process. It's actually very, very painless. Other than how much does it cost to get uh, the, uh, the pricing on it? On an average, not yours, just the market average sure it's it's not going to depend whatsoever on the tax savings or you know contingent on tax savings or anything like that we have a fixed structure based on the size and type of property so our beginning for example right now and i'm not going to get in trouble with this uh because one time i actually mentioned this on a podcast and this was several years ago and like you know everything went up in, in, in price and inflation and everything and we had to increase our prices and this podcast went viral and people calling me up like two years later hey you guys still doing this for like you know two thousand dollars like oh sorry we don't you know we don't do that but i heard you, you on the, the podcast the video, buddy <laughs> i heard you on the podcast uh, sorry that was a few years ago um yeah. so yeah our minimal at this point 2023 is like three thousand dollars that's like our, our bare minimum for like single family properties and up anywhere up to like about $10,000 for like, you know, very large commercial properties. Mm-hmm. If you're getting into like million square foot properties, it can be a little more than that just because the scope of work for engineers is a little bit more. Okay. Is there, and here's a dart in the dark, an average savings that you create? Do you know about what that would be? Absolutely. And it does, again, depend on the property type. So there are certain property types, happy to get into this a little bit as well, that will have more benefit than other property types. But typically, um, I'd say about 20% of the purchase price can be accelerated depreciation, which means in the first five years, you can typically recoup about 20% of the purchase price in uh, in tax savings. So just to break that down, so you a million dollar property, right? About $200,000 you can get as tax savings in the first you know five years. And there is an ability, a possibility to actually get a that entire amount, or at least 80% of that amount in the first year with something called bonus depreciation. So there is a, there's, there's a lot of benefit in getting this done, even on, again, smaller properties. Right. Yeah. If, if I'm flipping, you know, what's the average, should I, before I do cost segregation, I want to say I might want to sell in three years. Is it worth doing it if I'm holding it for three years or four years? It certainly is. I would say okay. the minimum is like if you're you know, again flipping is a bit a bit of a relative term, right? If you're yeah. holding it yeah. for a minimum, I would say about two years, it's it's usually going to be beneficial. Anything over two years, because and probably the premise of your question is anytime you sell a property, you're going to be subject to this tax called depreciation recapture tax, mm-hmm. which essentially says that any amount of depreciation you took during the life of ownership, you're going to be taxed on that amount uh, when you sell. And you're going to be subject to a tax on that. doesn't mean you're going to pay back that depreciation, a big misnomer. That's not what it means. It means you're going to be subject to a tax on that amount. So the time value of money, of using that money sure. during the meantime, is going to be just a much smaller window. Okay. Have you seen um, an uptick in, that, in cost segregation right now? Or are you seeing a little bit of a slowdown? Um, you know, since 2018... Which was the uh, you know the introduction of this hundred percent bonus depreciation? Yeah, it w- we had a huge uptick. I mean, it was just incredible. It's been amazing uh, to see. Right now, we're I mean, and it's just been you know growing and growing and increasing, increasing year after year since twenty eighteen. Um, right now, we still haven't seen a slowdown whatsoever. Even though it's you know beginning of twenty twenty three. Right now, when we're recording this, there's definitely a slowdown in the market in terms of transactions, and so yeah. a lot of sectors of real estate. Are slowing down. There's not as much, you know, transaction volume, uh, but 
the way that conservation works, since it's focused around tax time and it's done, and it's not necessarily something that needs to be done in the first year of ownership per se, so people can get this done you know, retroactively on a property they bought a year or two or five years ago. So there's always a lag between you know, when the market you know, reflects sure. acquisitions versus you know, a slowdown for, for us per se. Okay. Well, let me just kind of throw you under the bus. What am I not asking you <laughs> that you think our viewers, subscribers need to know? Um, well, I think probably, you know, something really important that subscribers need to know, anyone listening to this really needs to know when it comes to conservation is do not assume, and this is probably the big, you know, you say, you know, everyone knows what, what they say when you assume, but one of the biggest things that people assume is that their CPAs or their accountants are taking care of this for them. And and that's just not true, right? Accountants don't do this. You know, like, oh, most people have this, um, you know, myself included, when when people hear taxes, they're like, their minds, you know, kind of brains fog up, like, uh, taxes, I don't want to listen to this. I don't, I don't know. I have an accountant, so I don't have to deal with taxes, right? That's what everyone thinks. Well, unfortunately, most accountants, and there are exceptions out there, certainly, but most accountants are tax preparers, which means they're plugging in numbers Mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily going to be proactively telling you what different strategies are out there that you can save more money, what deductions are out there. And especially if someone's doing their own taxes, you need to educate yourself. And oftentimes, unfortunately, you need to educate your CPA to know that these tax deductions and these strategies are out there and are available. And, And so that's probably the biggest takeaway if you're listening to this. I would never. I'm glad I asked you that way because, yeah, I can see that being a big issue. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, well, um, I don't think I can come up with anything else right now, but I know that you've got uh, your show, Weiss Advice Podcast. When is that on? We air two episodes a week. Uh, I've been doing that for the past three years. Weiss Advice Podcast, anywhere you listen to podcasts. And um, yeah, it's really... It's it's a pleasure to you know to have to be on the show here with you, Joe. It's uh you know someone like yourself who's been so prolific in the industry for so many years. So I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you very much. We're going to put the link to your podcast down below so they can find you. And uh, um, thank you for taking the time, Yana. Pleasure. Thanks so much. All right. Take care.